This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Ghost faces C tier. C tier. That's all I said for this world to come crashing down around me. What do you think, Billy? Should I have put him higher up? No! <laughs> yes, granted, people are so mad at me for a stupid ranking. And just to spite all those comments, I still want to say he sucks. <laughs> Ah, that's right. I also don't smoke. <laughs> Ghostface has always felt like a killer with a lot of grace, but no style. I think we're all vaguely familiar on what Ghostface is. At least any boomer who's made out with a date in a drive through theater has. This killer can give himself a shroud that hides his heartbeat and turns off the big red glowing light in his ghost face. But he's just so unsatisfying to play. Sure, he crouches like his spine was replaced with a slinky, but all that lets he do is teabag people. The draw of playing Ghostface is that he can stalk survivors to fill up a meter on them. Once it's full, they become exposed. You can do this by entering stealth and peering around corners. This is where I draw my complaints. I should feel like I'm playing Persona 5, you know? Like I'm sweeping between walls, being the smarter person, and that the endgame chat will show all of the survivors apologizing profusely to me. After the first stalk, the survivors are gonna go, oh right, there's a Ghostface, then swing their cameras around while they do gens like it's fucking Deus Ex. The reason for that is that you can knock Ghostface out of his stealth by looking at him long enough to make things awkward. Granted, there was that time in the PTB where you could remove the Ghostface's power by just assuming he was there. I just wish that there was more to his stealth. You can still get people exposed through the incremental stalks or by finding a lucky angle. It's just that after the first hit, I don't feel powerful anymore. And in terms of thief tools, all you get is the slinky walk for 90% of your original speed. One good part is that survivors don't control when their meter regresses. You do. You can stalk a survivor up to 99%, then close the gap on them and tap the button once for 100% without them even noticing you were there. Survivors also keep their stalk after they heal, so you can always build in some debt on a guy that's injured then deal with him later. I know that a lot of DVD players want instant rewards, but that's not the playstyle here. If you do want instant rewards, one of the best ways to get stalks in is to hook someone, walk far away, and peer around a corner. It's an objective they're bound to come for in a short period of time. The guy on the hook can technically reveal you, but there are sweet spots that could put you in the right range where he can't spot you. Am I advocating for camping? Maybe. Or is it the game's playstyle? We all run back to Dead by Daylight's terrible design when it's working out for us. If not, some maps like Ormond and the Swamp have large vantage points in the center that can let you stalk from all sorts of angles without being noticed. So yes, my more refined palette says that Ghostface has some tactical value in him with the stalk economy, but actually living out the assassin lifestyle is pretty much not happening. The only thing I would recommend is learning to stalk in places that aren't just the generators. Out in the open, they're much more liable to never see it coming. I know I'm probably not convincing you that this character is the worst thing ever, though Oh, that's not really my mission. I don't even care if I convince you he's weak. Trust me, I'd rather play against Ghostface than Huntress for the 500th time. All I want to do is complain about silly things before the serious things. Maybe we all walk out of here with big ol' smiles on our faces. Like, why did they call him the Ghostface instead of just the Ghost? It makes him seem funnily literal as if he's actually a ghost with a face, which is most ghosts that aren't JFK. Maybe the DVD guys were just excited, especially after telling the writing team they could draft up all this. Apparently in some legal kerfuffle, behavior could only obtain the mask but not the person underneath it. So they went the anthology route, where every now and then an angsty man just puts on the white mask after someone nails their dad. This version of Ghostface is a journalist at a newspaper that lived a double life. He'd charm his way into the editor's section, find a nice girl, follow her home, and you won't believe what happens next. It's a lot of lore. The queues are long though, so you might have time. Christ, do I know these articles would have some appeal. I bet there's some guy out there that maybe delivered Gabby Petito pizza once and is ready to make it all about him. I can't tell if I'm happy about this adaptation. On one hand, with every new NFT, I find myself with less respect for the horror genre. And usually with licensed characters, they have to be very gentle with their stories. As anything more than one sentence about Jill fucking Valentine might risk her very established personality. Screw it, let's go the adaptation route. As long as it's covering something I don't care about, it's fine. Hell, it's kind of realistic. I know some games journalists who might murder for some retweets on Twitter. You know what? While I'm talking about lore, let's talk about real-life lore. The day Ghostface came out. I've always been amused by this trailer for the sheer amount of stuff in it that doesn't actually end up in the game. There's a shopping market map, a big fat cashier guy rendered out, and all these knickknacks to be scanned. It made everyone excited. Look at this stuff, the children cried. They wouldn't make this for no reason. And you've just gotta wait for the year 3 reveal trailer in two days. Or look at the massive leak on the 
PTB. I have a theory that Fun World, the guys who own Ghosty, wanted as little to do with this as possible while also making a fuck ton of money. Look, at least in Michaela Reed's case, they only gave her a Harry Potter-esque closet under the stairs and a stage. No one's gonna be murdered there unless Michaela has a palette-themed body pillow. And I've always felt that Ghostface's chapter always left a very small mark on Dead by Daylight in a lot of ways. We have cooler than him, we have more topical than him, well, we currently have more topical than him. In my opinion, Silent Hill was the best DVD chapter ever made in pretty much all of its categories. Resident Evil could have been there, but then behavior fell downstairs or something. The things I remember the most about Ghostface on the PTB was that you would get spotted in literally under a second. They had to double back and add a much longer grace window for him because of that. The idea, which I thought would be nice storytelling, was that if you knew Ghostface was there, he was spotted. Not particularly a game mechanic thing, just a way to insightfully match your heart jumping with the moment you notice him. Granted, now I think getting spotted is annoying. If you really want to live out the fantasy of being an invisible fly on the wall, then you're better off using Surfshark VPN. And otherwise, you could always get hacked. I'm perfectly fine with bad things happening to you. Surfshark VPN allows you to connect to remote servers all around the world and encrypt your data while doing so. Oh, what's that? You've been kidnapped and left with your iPhone, but in order to call for help, you need to access Starbucks public Wi-Fi? Well, Surfshark can be used on multiple devices. Plus, that was very stupid of those kidnappers. Get access to over 3,000 servers in 65 countries, allowing you to escape price gouging and to get to see your favorite TV shows where you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Plus, if you do get into some trouble, Surfshark can locate any breaches in security and let you know if any of your passwords have been leaked. Unironically, ever since I've started this channel, I've been using VPNs and purchasing them with codes from sponsors like this. It gives me peace of mind, and I don't have to worry that someone will scream, IT'S HIM! next time I go outside. Use my code ROBY or click the link in my description to get access to an 83% discount and an extra three months. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. Anyway, let's get back on track. Ghostface has his three personal perks, and I think every single one has fallen out of fashion. Consider this something closer to an old foray into your grandpa's closet. Don't mind the confederate patch on Furtive Chase, it was just a different time back then. Furtive Chase, or FC if you're a Redditor, gives you a stack every time you hook the obsession. Each stack reduces your terror radius by 4 meters when you're in a chase. In hopes that someone isn't it- wait, no, what the fuck? Why would you give a damn? So there's this problem Dead by Daylight has where some perks don't actually tell you when they're helping you. Like, you see a perk like Hex Retribution. When on Earth? are you gonna tell that it's making people oblivious? I get that it screams when it reveals everyone, but Hex Retribution could be quite good right now with the new Boon Totems. It's just that it leaves you so far in the dark that there's no reason for you to believe that it's actually making a difference. Bird of Chase is the worst version of that. It tells you it's doing nothing and it's telling you the truth. Maybe on Myers it'll give you no heartbeat, but 16 meters off of Ghostface is not gonna impress your drive-in date. The kicker with this perk is that when someone rescues the obsession, they become the obsession. It's like a daisy chain where you're supposed to prioritize certain targets over others to get all of the stacks. Perhaps the plan was to encourage the killer to target the rescuing survivor rather than the guy off the hook. FC only exists to be paired with Rancor or Nemesis. The former creates this wild roulette of who gets morried at the end, and the latter allows you to make the people who rescue the obsession oblivious for 60 seconds. I'm All Ears activates when a survivor fast vaults something or bursts out of a locker in your presence, revealing their auras for a good 8 seconds, effectively letting you skip the mind games for a brief while. They can't fake you out when you've got x-ray vision. Normally, I'll put this on ranged killers who can stake out a window and fire something at it if the survivor runs back towards it. It can also help aim in general. For everyone else, I kind of ignore it because I've been mind gaming for so long that I can just do it myself. Unless you're the current version of Deathslayer because, oh my baby, what did they do to you? Thrilling Tremors has some value. About as much value as you can pull out of a closet anyway. Whenever you pick up a survivor, all generators that aren't being worked on become blocked. The effect lasts 16 seconds and is about as long as it would take for a survivor to wiggle off your shoulders. So if you're carrying someone and you see the perk go on cooldown, it's already too late. This gives you the light benefit of slowing down objectives in edge cases, but what you really want is the map knowledge. This turns the stage so white that Furtive Chase gets a little jealous. The generators that don't turn white have been interacted with recently and someone is likely on it right now. It can be tied with high mobility killers to speed over to generators without missing a beat, it's strong, but I'll never ever play against this and I can't place my finger as to why. 
It's basically an information perk that solely relies on who's working on generators. Sure, you don't get the aura reading like with barbecue, but what the fuck else are survivors gonna be doing while you carry someone? Admiring each other's outfits? Well, actually, I have some thought as to why no one uses ghost face perks, and that feeds into my big social diagram. The idea that the perks we believe to be good are just socially reinforced by the community. The first impression of a perk is basically your only chance to test it out, which is why, for the most part, you only ever see it when the killer is just released. Especially if they have a bad experience and none of Ghostface's perks tie into his power. Furtive Chase is outshined by Night Shroud, I Am All Ears can't be taken advantage of, and he's too slow to get the most out of Thrilling Tremors. That's embarrassing. That's like pulling up to a BYOB with not but warm IPAs. I mean, Behavior usually brings decent perks to the table whenever they release a solo character. What happened here? The new survivor literally alters reality by touching totems, and Bubba gave you a long-term investment. So what gives here? Granted, they have worked themselves into kind of a corner with these licensed chapters. Since you have to buy the famous characters with real money, no one's been spending their shards. Oh, that's why you've turned to the dark side. Well, at least the Empire didn't voluntarily put themselves in debt by giving out tons of free money as an apology for busting up the console market. Basically, what I'm saying is I hope they recognize that the next chapter is essentially already paid for unless they think they can fix the economy with more skins. Though, I guess long-term planning isn't DVD's forte. One of the things about Ghostface is that he's slow. Very slow. The slinky's in his spine, not his feet. Speed matters when it comes to objective pressure. Faster characters can run to the generators and knock people off them. Hence why people tend to go with one perk that slows the game down naturally. At least when they're not double, triple, quadruple dipping. But I've always felt that people never really take into account their character speed when choosing their perks. I regress generators with ones that benefit how slow old Danny is. Okay, benefit isn't the right word. More like cope. Before the last chapter, it was oppression, as that would give me some indication on where to go next. That changes with the pinhead chapter. Huh. Ghostface Pinhead, why does everyone gotta have a problem with their head? Why don't we ever see someone get mauled by a monster with the body of a lawnmower in the face of Hank Hill? Sorry, that was off topic. Ever since Scourge Hook's Gift of Pain was added, it's become a part of my kit. This perk spawns four special hooks. If you put a survivor on it, they'll be mangled while injured, and after healing, they repair and heal at a 9% penalty. With Ghostface's limp, you really can't go back to hooks as eagerly, nor can you have any semblance of control over generators while chasing people. The downside about Gift of Pain is that it goes away after you injure them a second time. Except with Ghostface, you can stalk people without actively hurting them. If you get some social credit score off of someone, you don't need to re-injure them right away. Just slink off and get them later while they suffer the debuff. For the record, I do this too with Nemesis, as I can always infect a survivor, then leave them alone. I get the argument about, hey, that man is going to complete that generator. Why should I stop chasing him? And I really should stop making counter arguments against myself because I always lose. It's dumb, but when I have Nia at 99% stock, then get taken out of stealth, there's this part of me that just wants to try again later. Because if you strike her, it's just gonna reset to zero. I wanna steal her heart my way. So no, pencil in an appointment later. Mindbreaker, yes, I've got a problem, I know. This perk exhausts and blinds survivors while they work on generators, just in case you haven't heard the other million times I've recommended it. Hold on, what? It's called Fearmonger? Awesome, so this perk I'm recommending for the first time is pretty good. Ghostface's ability to stay hidden allows you to be the initiating aggressor in most chases, giving you the power to cash in on that five second duration. It's very potent at giving you a leg up on the battlefield while also forcing survivors to manage their exhaustion if they're running something like Sprint burst. I know I just made a statement about how some perks don't tell you jack, and Fearmonger is one of those. I just say that you gotta give it a try. But look, at least this perk wasn't a sore loser when it came back to the Union. There's also Surveillance. This perk highlights regressing generators to you in white, then turns them yellow for a brief moment after a survivor starts fixing it again. Both parts of this work out pretty nicely. The base effect helps you control objectives and plan out your route. If you think about how you're going to approach a generator, you can find the best angle to stalk it. The underappreciated bit on the ghost has always been the Sound modifier though. With you being one Ned Flanders conversation away from losing your power, you'll want to sneak about with a lot of line of sight blockers. By amping up your ears in a way that matters, you'll be aware of your surroundings without making yourself vulnerable. I also like to give myself something offensive, something in the chase itself because Ghostface's kit is kind of limited when he has to do the thing that everyone else has to do. To that end, I bring Bamboozle, which blocks windows that I vault. It's a small edge for me, but people might want something more proactive. Ghostface always uses basic attacks, which brings me to Haunted Grounds. Two booby traps 
lots of totems that expose everyone for 60 seconds when broken while you're lurking around without a heartbeat. Though, if you want a version that's a bit more modern, you can swap it to Dragon's Grip. This perk is a bit of a gamble. When you kick a generator, it becomes cursed for 30 seconds and exposes any nosy neighbors for 60 if they touch it. The only drawback is if they don't touch it in that 30 seconds, it still goes on a lengthy cooldown. Now it's time to move on to the add-ons, and I gotta tell you, today feels pretty special. I mean, look outside, dude. We can see the numbers these add-ons were hiding for five years. Wow, how did that take you so long? The yellow add-on cuts a fourth of a second off of the stalking meter? <laughs> <laughs> Put it back. Set it back to moderately, tremendously, considerably. You've taken off the veil and now even the placebo effect doesn't work. You're telling me this whole time none of these add-ons were really doing anything? What kind of Twilight Zone bullshit is this? Alright, well, let's talk about the ones that are here. Personally, I'm a big offense guy, like I just said. You know, skip on your feet, throw in a few jabs, that kind of shit. You could pull out a couple of quick downs with your good old knife if you know what you're doing. If you give yourself the crouch buff, you can actually use your power way more often in chase. You can also reduce the range at which people can reveal you. Because if you keep taking him out of stealth, he goes from the ghost face to just the face. Dead by Daylight has a bad habit of increasing stats that no one gives a hoot about. On Pinhead, it's the one that controls the max distance of the chains. With Trickster, it's the ones that have anything to do with his main event. And with Ghostface, I'm very puzzled about the ones that allow you to move faster while stalking when, in order to get the meter up the fastest, you have to fucking stand still. But no, 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 it was the pig add-ons that needed fixing. Except you still left Amanda's secret as terrible as it was. You can increase how fast you mark someone when you lean, which is already a double speed compared to stalking while just following them. Just gonna ask behavior if they're in on the joke real quick. Christ, if you bring the red article, you can get a stalk in a second and a half. Maybe while they're on the ground, they can read it and find out what kind of dino nugget they'd be. The red security camera though? Uh, no, it's a bad show. This shows the aura of every survivor outside of your terror radius after downing a marked target, giving you the staggering task of using your power perfectly for a really mediocre reward. You need to stalk someone to the max amount, then down them without losing your shroud to trigger this, whereas it can be easily replaced by 90% of the tracking perks already in this game, most of which just ask you to stab someone. I guess that technically frees up a perk for anyone who's really committed to quadruple dipping. Honestly, the best set of ads ons are either the red article and the purple lens or the two crawling speed buffs. Ghostface can hold a lot of power if he gets his leaning stalks in like that. Sure, the survivors are spinning their heads around, but all you need is two and a half seconds to get them exposed. Hell, after playing him for so long just to make this video, I think I learned some other things. Like, if you learn how the lean mechanic works, you can probably begin to dominate your matches like I was. It's just a little bit more slippery than it should be. Oh, fuck, did I contradict myself? All right, you know what? Let's do the turn of the heel. B tier. There. We can all have a good laugh about how wacky this little adventure was, if it weren't for the greater threat in the air. Oh, sorry, did you think I was only going to tease at the elephant in the room? Behavior have been quite naughty boys recently. I know people keep sharing that lowering stat of player numbers on Twitter and call the game a sinking ship, but let's be real, the ship has no holes in it, it's just packed with explosives. For those out of the loop, the previous pinhead chapter has become an NFT. To put it another way, they nabbed the models, the box, and the line that comes in the box, then took them out to be sold to other people via the blockchain. If you don't get NFTs or why they're bad, I doubt I can change that. And look, I'm not a good man. I see tragedies going on in the environment and I take a picture of it with my slave-made iPhone. It's kind of ironic because this NFT stuff was probably in the works for a while, months. Then, the funniest thing happened. Three days before Dead by Daylight dropped this news, Steam said, if you try to short us with NFTs, we'll laser gun you into actual dust. And, I think I kind of wanted to blow this game's head off. As someone who's been here when this game hit console, I can remember so many controversies. So many. But all on this small yet irritating scale. However, hearing that the game is unironically facing removal for the greed of its corporate overlords, I feel like there's a part of me that would find it hella satisfying. That there would be something cathartic about it being gone tomorrow. Like some Greek myth about this arrogant creature that desired more than it could handle and betrayed those around it, smited down for its hubris in a manner so hard that it sent shockwaves throughout the world. They'll etch it on a wall somewhere, I promise. And the only reason I'm being such an ass about this is because it seems DBD knew what it was doing. Right after they announced the NFT, they started posting so much shit. Cause the thing about cancel culture is that all you really gotta do is put stuff in between the timeline so that people see it as in the past. And now that corporations know how to deal with this shit, all an angry Twitter mob can do is smash people who aren't as able to fight back. Look, even I'll forgive this pinhead NFT. Too many people rely on DBD for all sorts of stuff for me to actually want it to implode, but I, just like everyone else, am willing to forget about things so that I can keep playing my video game. But I want it to be known that once I remembered, and these videos always age really quick, so all I can do is leave a timestamp that the sentiment was once, fuck you DBD. 
partner with your madman. This compressed set of bites will never forget. Sorry, that was weird and dramatic. Let me get out the kazoo, guys! <laughs> Ghostface! Let's talk about Ghostface! I will tell you that normally before I do a killer from a licensed chapter, I'll watch their movies. Or, in Freddy Krueger's case, play his Flash games. Not with Ghostface, though. Frankly, it couldn't be bothered. Not to mention that the lines where Scream ends and Scary Movie begins have gotten a little blurry to me. Maybe I'll just talk about that Scream event in Warzone. Actually, hold on. Scream, you intellectual whore! What? You just take up anyone that lines up and asks for you, don't you? Did I have to receive a Bible on a new character because you sold the original one to be an NFT? Sorry, I'm losing the plot. What's going on? Alright, what do people remember about the Ghostface chapter? The best we got was his release coinciding with the death of a perk that Behavior was selling at an overpowered level to bring people to buy Ash Williams. Huh? What does Michaela let you do? They get to pick the totems. Put them back up. Sorry, move over, Billy. You didn't deserve that cigarette. Let's take a picture together for posterity.